What you guys got another video this mini pc is pretty powerful for the money it's the chewy core box it's their fifth gen uh, version of this mini pc and it has an intel core i5 13500h as you can see here this one comes with 16 gigabytes of ram and a 512 gigabyte uh, storage drive now there is some other options available there and also this can be upgraded which we'll talk about a little bit later on in a video it does work with windows and linux as well so depending on what choice of operating system you want to use you can check that box and choose which one you want to order it comes in at around about 400 pounds which is around about 350 in the us i think so this is what you're going to get inside the box your user manual your vest amount here also some screws you're also going to get your power brick or power adapter here the brand is Huntkey. It's a 19 volt, 4.74 amps, 65 watts. So that is the actual power brick here. It's got a barrel connector on the end here, and the plug will change depending on what particular type of country you live in. I'm in the UK, so I get a UK plug. So this is the actual unit right here. Let's take a closer look in more detail. So on the front, we have our power button. We have that Type C uh, there. This is not a Thunderbolt one. This is just Type C, data only. We have also two uh, USB 3.0 ports on the front here as well. Nice little design on top here, made of plastic and also uh, metal, the actual unit itself. Some ventilation on this side here, pretty good ventilation there. Same on the other side, more ventilation on the back, which is where all the main ports are. Starting from the right, we have our Kensington lock. We have four times USB 3.0 ports. We have two display ports on here and two HDMI 2.0 ports, not 2.1, 2.0, 2 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on there as well. An audio jack, which is a, a multi jack there for audio. And we also have that DC port there to power the actual unit and a nice big ventilation strip along the bottom here to allow heat to dissipate from the back here. Also on the bottom, we have another two areas here which do help with dissipating heat from the actual unit itself. We have two. Uh, anti slip rubber feet on the bottom, and we have that VESA mount there where my thumb is. So let's take the bottom off and take a look inside so we can see what it looks like. Inside here, we have quite a large uh, CPU cool on here with four uh, copper heat pipes here to help dissipate the heat from that Intel 13th gen Core i5 13500H. That's 12 core 16 threads at 4.75 gigahertz frequency which isn't too bad for a little mini PC like this. We have Wi-Fi 6 inside here as well. That card can be upgraded. And we have the SATA port on here with a power uh, port inside there, just in case you wanted to put in a SSD inside here. There is nowhere to mount it at the moment. I've just removed the cover for the memory. The memory in here has 16 gigabytes on single channel, and that's 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4,800 megahertz. Now, if you're looking to install a SSD, it does fit in here, as you can see just about, but there is nowhere to mount it. So it's not gonna be much good to you unless they offer a mounting bracket to mount that SSD. Now, looking on top of the unit here, this is where your SSD is mounted right here. You can upgrade this to a one terabyte if you wanted to. And again, there's no markings or branding on this ssd here and same thing goes for the memory as well there's no markings or branding just a bit of black tape on there now we're going to be doing some streaming here at 4k at 60 fps and you can see it runs pretty smoothly so if you want to use this as a streaming device for plex or maybe uh playing your movies it's going to work perfectly fine and again we're streaming this straight off of youtube at 4k at 60 fps the playback is silky smooth, no stuttering or miss frames or anything like that, as you can see here. Once it stabilizes, you get the odd little frame drop, but it's not noticeable in the playback of the actual stream. So if you're playing 4K movies, which I'll show you a test file in a second, it will play extreme 4K content, and I'll show you that with using the Jellyfish sample. But again, really decent playback for the streaming. So let's go ahead and play the Jellyfish 400 Mbps 4K Ultra HD HEVC 4K file. And you can see it is silky smooth. And this is quite a difficult file to play for a lot of mini PCs, but this one plays it no problem at all. 
There's no stuttering and no jerkiness on the playback. I'll drag the file across to see whether it can play straight away. And you can see with that power, it just plays it straight away. There's no pause there. Now, I did notice that the drive is called for C XP 1000 F512 G. So that is the make and brand of uh, NVMe drive that we have in here. It's a PCI Express 3.0 times 4. And I'm pretty sure that you could upgrade this to a PCI Express uh, Gen 4 in here because the speeds are 3,449 reads and also writes is 2,427 writes. So if you wanted to improve that, you would be able to put a Gen 4 inside here to get those faster speeds. But other than that, not too bad for a MIDI PC. And it's going to be plenty fast enough for what you really need, in my honest opinion. Let's run a quick Geekbench 6 benchmark here. I'm going to run the CPU benchmark for Geekbench 6, and we'll see what score this little mini PC gets. Now, the score is for the single core, it's 2,386, and on the multi core, we're getting 10,313, which isn't too bad for a mini PC. Let's go ahead and do the GPU benchmark as well on Geek, uh, Geekbench 6, and I'll run this quickly here, and we'll see what sort of uh, score we get for the GPU. Now the GPU in here is the Intel IRIX XE graphics, which is the 84EU, and that's 1.45 gigahertz frequency for the GPU, and we're getting 13,203 on the OpenCL score. Not much happening in the BIOS, a pretty uh, simple BIOS here. You can see it is the Raptor Lake ULT processor information, 13th gen and you can see the name of the processor there. So the BIOS is pretty much locked down. You can't do too much inside this BIOS here with undervolting and things like that. As you can see, we just have the main screen, security, boot, and save and exit. So a pretty basic BIOS setup here. You can change things like secure boot and things like that. Inside here, add your administration password and user password, and change the boot order and things like that inside this BIOS, but that's pretty much it for the BIOS. Now let's do a Cinebench score here. This is the R23. Now I can tell you right now that Cinebench really does torture a lot of mini PCs. It does it with all of them. And uh, this one is no different as you can see here. But the score here was 12,750. And that is a pretty reasonable score. Again, we did have some thermal throttling going on with that CPU as you'd expect using the Cinebench because it is quite an aggressive program. Now, if you want to uh, play retro games, it's going to have no problem at all playing your favorite retro games. It's going to be able to do all of those. It can also play other games as well, and it can play some 1080p gaming. Again, CSGO, you can expect to get around about 95 FPS, and also things like Dota 2, which is going to be around about 95 FPS as well. If you want to play games like Grand Theft Auto 5, it will be able to play those particular games and you're probably going to get around about 65 to 80 FPS at 1080p. Of course, some games will have to be dropped down to 720p to be able to run properly to get a decent frame rate. But if you're looking to buy a mini PC to become a gaming system, then don't waste your money because mini PCs are not really designed to replace a desktop gaming PC with a dedicated GPU. Where this mini PC comes into its own is with the quad 4K display output. That means you can run four monitors on here. And with the Wi-Fi 6 plus Bluetooth 5.2 and that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, it's a pretty nice little mini PC. One concern I do have is for the size of the actual mini PC, there's no real room for internal storage. There's no bracket included for an internal uh, SSD for extra storage. So you're going to have to rely on that one terabyte of drive that you can actually put in here, and that is it. Now, of course, it does come with an abundance amount of USB ports, which means you can use an external drive if you wanted to, but it's always nice to have that room for an external storage. They do have the power there, and they do have the SATA port in there, but there's no way of mounting that SSD inside there, unless that's going to come as an optional extra, or that's going to come in the next generation of Mini PC, which is the 6th gen. I really don't know because there's no information about it on their website. Other than that, it's not a bad little mini PC at the sort of price point that they're asking. It's around about £400 in the UK, and I think that's going to be around about $350 uh, in the US, which 
isn't too bad. Other than that, it's not a bad mini PC if you can call it a mini PC because it is on the slightly larger side compared to a normal standard mini PC. Other than that, I'll leave the links and information in the video description if you're interested in something like this. Pretty powerful mini PC for the money. Uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts are on this mini PC. I'd be interested to read your comments. Bye for now.